and welcome. Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. My name is Gregory Patterson and welcome to another DIY University by Sally Beauty by way of my New York City apartment. I hope that you are having a fantastic Wednesday and thank you so much for joining us again. These DIY University classes have been so fun to put together for you and what's been even more fun is all of the questions that you guys have been sending to my DMs, which is why we're here today. Today is all about you. I have really sourced deeply into my DMs to answer some of your questions. Now, a lot of you have sent the same, so I've kind of grouped them and gathered them up and kind of pulled out what I thought are most relevant for the trends happening right now, for the hair color trends that are happening right now. P.S. May is Vivid Hair Color Month at Sally Beauty. Woohoo! So now is the time to go bright, to go bold, and have fun with hair color. Um, I hope you all can hear me a little better today. I have upgraded to a 899 microphone, and I think this has solved our audio issues. So hopefully you all can hear me. Now, what has happened with, with uh, the DIY University is I've invited you all into my DMs because yes, I love to answer your questions because my goal in life, in my career, is to help you get better results at home. And the only way we can do that is by sharing knowledge and information, which is why we are going to walk through this day together. I want you to take out your pens and paper, always take out your pens and paper, because there's a lot of information coming your way. And at the very end, I'm going to share a super easy technique with you. So please stay along and um, enjoy the ride. I hope you learn a little something, something. My homegirl back here is waiting to get a little Monty piece. And uh, I'll show you a quick, soft, easy way to get a money piece if you're wearing a curtain fringe or a longer fringe right now which is one of, um, I would say, probably 15 questions in my DM. So uh, without further ado, I say, let's go. You will see me reading. I have all of your questions right in front of me. I didn't want to uh, skip a beat. And I think let's uh, just get into this. Question number one, developer. Do I need a developer? If yes, when? If not, if no, then what do I do? How do I create hair colors? So let's go back to what developer is. Developer is hydrogen peroxide and oxygen that is going to be the catalyst that activates the hair color, okay? So they come in, in levels, you know, 10, 20, 30, and 40. And I like to think of volume, or excuse me, as developer, as energy. So when you need a developer is when you are looking to cover gray, okay? This is going to be with your permanent hair colors and you can use the developer range 10 volume, 20 volume, 30 volume, and 40 volume. Now 20 volume and above is when you get gray coverage with permanent hair color, okay? Demi color per, uh, demi hair color is when you'll use a 10 volume where you are just getting the slightest bit of lift. So think of a cuticle of hair similar to like um, an armadillo with a bunch of scales laying down. The developer goes in with the product and helps you, I just did some, okay, and helps lift up those shingles, those cuticles, that little armadillo scale, okay? What happens then is the hair color can go underneath interact with the cortex of the hair, which is where all your fabulous color pigment lives. So you will need a developer when you are looking to deposit color, okay? Deposit color with a demi permanent hair color, or when you are using to make a permanent hair color change with a permanent hair color, and you're going to use 10, 20, 30, or 40. Now, Lightener, of course, bleach is always going to need a developer to activate it. Again, think of developer as energy. And remember, higher developer does not always mean better hair color results. It also doesn't mean 
that you're going to get that megawatt lift and go from level one, dark black hair to platinum blonde in one step. It does not mean that, okay? I want to protect the integrity of your hair and keep you on a journey that, you know, gives you success when you're doing hair color at home. So that's the first question. Question two, vivid hair color. Do I need to pre-lighten my hair? How do I know if I need to pre-lighten it? If you are looking for those true tone results, I am talking, you want the color that is, there we go, you want the color that is on the color swatch, okay, exactly. Then you need to get the hair as light as you can so that it can take that true tone. Remember, always refer to your color wheel because any underlying pigment that is left in the hair, the color that you are to lay on top will take on that underlying contributing tone. So this is where it can get muddy really quickly if you don't lighten enough or if you use a color that is opposite the color wheel and, or excuse me, on the same side and it gets a little muddy and ruddy. So make sure you're pre-lightening the hair enough and safely to manage and protect the integrity of your hair, okay? So question number three is, how do I preserve this vivid hair color or pastel hair color? This is when we're gonna have a little moment here about falling in love with cool water. And I know so many of you are gonna be like, nope, never gonna happen in the shower, cold water on my body, no thank you. I'm with you, which is why getting a handheld little rinsing machine is going to be perfect. If you have one in your kitchen sink, even better. But cool water really is gonna be your best friend. Warm water will open up the cuticle uh, of the hair follicle and really allow your color to rinse out. That's gonna be number one. Number two is making sure that you are using the right color care products. Now I am talking about sulfate free, sodium chloride free. You do not want harsh surfactants that are going to open that cuticle up too much, be too cleansing, be too purifying, because you're gonna watch your hair color go right down the drain, okay? So I would say water and shampoo are probably your worst enemies and they will be your quickest way to color fade out. Washing less is also going to be one of the greatest ways to successful uh, hair color, vibrancy, uh, uh, preservation. So when you shampoo less, you might need to incorporate some products that you've never used before, like a dry shampoo or a texturizing spray. Dry shampoos have a beautiful ability to absorb oil and residue and give you some extra longevity between your washes. So washing less and using dry shampoo is going to be yo champion. Now I will say to preserve your color, hair color products and innovation and technology has come so, so far. Back in the day, I used to do this color hack in the shower where I would take um, semi-permanent hair color and mix it into my conditioner um, in the shower. That way I can almost do like a color conditioner refresh. But look what happened here. New from Color Lux, um, exclusive at Sally Beauty, are cleansing conditioners with pigment in them. Oh my God, this is insane because this literally solved that hack that I used to do in the shower of using so much of my own conditioner and then putting in some of my leftover um, semi-permanent hair color that I would use and mix it on and let it set and kind of do a refresh. So now you have an option to not only gently cleanse your hair, but also putting back in pigment. So shop your pigment and remember they're also super, super mixable. Another new product that I am obsessed with right now are these incredible Drop It Shine Drops. You guys, this kit is insane. I'm gonna show you what is inside. You get a cool silicone bowl. You use your existing conditioner. It comes with a little uh, spatula and these incredible, let's see if that light can pick it up, These this incredible dropper system. So look at this. 
All you do is give it a shake. This is purple. I'm going to use the dropper and I am just going to drop in the color that I want to refresh or enhance. Keep in mind, again, super, super intermixable. Watch what happens here. You see that I just take my conditioner that is already existing in my shower. I don't have to purchase anything other than the shine drops themselves. Look at how richly pigmented that is. And that goes on your head for 10 minutes and you rinse it out. And it's a beautiful way to keep your pastels beautifully pastel or those vivids incredibly bright and vivid. There are a, a beautiful selection of colors. So check those out as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do I call it? Cool water conditioner, conditioner hat. Got that. Okay. So let me talk again about the four different types of hair color. So there's a temporary hair color, which is exactly that. It is just going to go on. And the next time you shampoo, it's going away. Uh, Good Dye Young makes a really cool one. Um, uh, it's called Poser Paste. I absolutely love it. The other one is a temporary, uh, excuse me, a semi. So a semi-permanent hair color, you need no developer whatsoever. It comes straight from the tube directly onto your natural hair or your pre-lightened hair to deposit a tone. So I want you to keep in mind that if you don't want to pre-lighten your hair, you're not out of the vivid hair color game. You're not out of the pastel hair color game. Here's why. If you see like this color lux, this color lux is also developed for deeper tones. So there are semi-permanent hair colors out there that are formulated to go on directly um, your natural tone, what it is right now without having to pre-lighten. So don't think that you can't play in the world of hair color. There are so many solutions out there for you. And all you have to do is just go on the app or go on sallybudio.com or in store and look around, ask an associate, what you can use on your existing hair color without having to pre-lighten. The other two uh, hair colors are demi-permanent. That demi-permanent is again going to enhance the tone that you have right now. It is deposit only. It does require a volume developer of 10 to get a slight subtle lift and deposit so that color can go and play in the cortex um, of the hair and that's where all the hair color pigment is. And lastly, permanent hair color, of course, when we are looking to make a permanent change, you will see grow out with your permanent hair color because you have permanently rearranged the color molecules on the inside. You have taken the molecules that exist, red, yellow, and blue, and decided to rearrange them and become a new color, okay? So that's what happens with permanent hair color. It's able to go in. So fourth question, will lightening my hair damage it? So I wanna have a little real talk about this. So technically speaking, anytime we put a chemical to our hair, it is technically damaged, okay? Because our natural cuticle has been altered. Keep in mind that we can go from like zero damage or just like a whisper of damage or we can go to a full on yell and scream of damage if we over process and use volumes that are too high and use too much bleach and go again and again and again and again where it's stringy and it's gummy and it's soupy. That is damaged hair, okay? The beautiful thing about hair color and technology are the, the, the innovations. And I always mention the Ion Color Brilliance, the... Um, the bond multiplier, when I am telling you that when you use the bond multiplier in all of your lightning services or your color services, the integrity, the inside structure of your hair is going to be protected. So if you are thinking about playing in hair color and going lighter and going brighter, do it. But use the technology that's available. Use the bond multipliers that you add to your lighteners to help while the cuticle is open, maintain the structure and the integrity of the inside of the cuticle, okay? Secondly, I really want you to hear me on this because this is where I think a lot of us go wrong at home when we're pre-lightening our hair. So 
let's say you were a level three, okay? And just to show you here, here's my color swatch. Level three, you're about right here. You're a dark brown. And let's say you want to get up to a level seven, like a nice little, you know, deer color, deer skin, kind of honey dough color. You need to lighten the hair about three, four, five, six, seven. That's four levels of lift, okay? So if you're using lightener, you have options when it comes to developer. Now, I don't want you to automatically go for 40 volume because you said, hey, Gregory told me that 40 volume has the most energy, so that means it's going to lift higher and lift better. No. 40 volume means that the cuticle is going to be blown open really, really wide. And all that lightener is going to get in and play on the middle of the cuticle, but it's just maybe too much because what's going to happen is your hair is going to get light. It's going to expose that orangey color and you're going to be like, oh no, I don't want orange and rinse it off. And then you're not going to be at the desired level of lightness. Then you might want to go back and do it again using that 40 volume again because you just want to bring all that energy. But folks, I want you to consider dropping your levels down. 20 volume. I get the best results using 20 volume. Now, I might use 20 volume twice, okay? If I am doing a double process, I'd rather use 20 volume two times. So I have a nice gentle lift and a nice gentle play of the bleach going in with the color molecules mixing and doing its, you know, removal of one color and a removal of the blue and the, and the red, okay? So less, slow and steady will get you to where you want to be. More energy does not always mean lighter. To me, what more energy means is more open gates and all the cows go out and it's just a stampede. So keep them corralled and just let a few out and just let a few out here and there, smaller sections, and you will get to the results that you want. I promise you, and I'm going to show you how today, okay? Two more questions. So when do I use semi-permanent hair color versus permanent hair color? So semi-permanent hair color, here's what it's born to do. It's born to come straight out of the tube and directly on your hair to deposit that tone that it's been born to do only. Okay, only. It's not going to cover gray. It is not going to permanently change your hair color. It's just there for us to live and play with a little bit of color. Completely intermixable, absolutely. But it's really just designed for us to have fun and us to have some vibrancy and us to have some richness and shine. That's when you're going to use the semi-permanent hair color, okay? Permanent hair color, if you are looking to cover gray, you absolutely need to use permanent hair color. You can use demi-permanent hair color in certain situations where you're about 25% gray or less, and you're not really looking to cover them. You're looking to camouflage them, to just soften them and blend them away. Keep in mind that the cuticles only opened with a 10 volume, so that opportunity to get into the cuticle really well is less when you're using demi-permanent. That's why we want to bump up to 20 volume to get a little more lift and let those dye molecules play with the existing color molecules that are in the hair, okay? So I hope that helps you determine um, kind of where to go, semi-permanent versus permanent. Permanent is a permanent change. You're gonna watch the grow out. Semi-permanent, it's gonna last about mm, four to 12 shampoos and you're going to have to refresh it. Now, funny thing is, is the largest dye molecule is red. And you might be thinking, yep, I've tried reds, I've tried pinks, they rinse out of my hair the most quick, and um, how do I make it stay? Well, red is just going to sit on the surface and stain it, really, okay? So it just sits right there on the surface. It's the largest molecule, the hardest one to take out, okay? Easiest one to put in, it tastes beautifully, but it's the hardest one to take out for some reason. 
Now the smallest molecule is blue. So you will notice that when you use teals or blues or purples, anything with more of a blue color pigment available, that is gonna stay in your hair much, much longer and the fade out isn't going to be as noticeable. So think of that when you're considering going either bold or maybe into your pastel tones, that if you don't want as much color fade and maintenance, your cooler tones might be the way to go for you, okay? Hope that helps. Now, lastly, I have a friend. Um, she emailed me and she was having such a challenge with dyeing her gray hair back to a color. So she went completely silver and had some challenge. So here's the question. Hey, Gregory, I recently dyed my 100% gray hair um, back to my natural color, which was basically like a level six, a level seven natural brown, okay? Um, I followed uh, blah, blah, blah. So the, the color didn't take well. It washed out really warm. What the heck happened? So all of my gray coverage ladies, gentlemen, unicorns out there, um, if or even if you are pure, pure white and looking to bring your color back, okay, or go darker, listen up here. So there are several things that could have happened here. Number one is I would go to the developer selection of volume. What volume did you use? Because on gray hair, if you get a developer that is too high, sometimes with that energy, there's too much pigment happening in the hair and white hair has no pigment. Technically, it has a little bit of yellow in it, but um, it really is without pigment. So you're trying to put this pigment in as the cuticle is so lifted open. So I would first go to the developer use and if you used a 40, use a 30. If you used a 30, use a 20, okay? Start there. The second thing that I think could go could have gone wrong is the color was not left on for the full amount of the processing time. Here's what happens. Is sometimes when we apply color to our hair, we look in the mirror and we're like, oh my gosh, it's so dark. And you run and rinse it off. But here's what happens with hair color, y'all. The molecules are encapsulated. The color pigments are encapsulated. And they need protected to get into the cuticle. And they have a certain time to burst open and do their thing and attach and bond. Now, this happens in different stages for each dye molecule. So you might notice that it's getting really dark. But that means that blue tone is coming to do its job. It may come in to cancel that red and that orange that you don't want, um, or that yellow or that green, that ash base that you put in because you don't like red hair. So you really need to let the hair color do its job for the full duration of time in order for all of those color molecules to bind as they've been designed and encapsulated to get into the cuticle to make sure it can travel its way through to bind to the yellow, okay? Lastly, the shade and tone selected. I would go in, if you went with a natural tone and used a high volume developer, you might be bringing too much of the warmth energy in and you might need to add an ash base, um, um, an ash base to your formulation, okay? And lastly, pre-softening the hair. I've talked about this before. This is where you use your 20 volume developer first on your gray coverage to let it open up a little bit, let it dry, and then you apply your formulation directly on top. So that might be it. And lastly, pre-pigmenting or re-pigmenting the hair. This is where you add the pigments that are lacking in the hair. So when I am talking about white hair, gray hair, and I need to go darker all the way here, I am missing all of these tones, which essentially are all of these colors. So I might need to put back orange and red into the hair if I am going into a deeper brown shade. Now, the best way to do this is by using a semi-permanent hair color, and you can literally take your orange color, lay it on top, 
and then put your brown on top of it. So this really helps repigment the hair before you overlay a color on top, okay? If that feels like a little bit too much for you, this is when I recommend going to your stylist for this gig. Okay, so now that has answered all the questions. I want to share with you a technique on getting a curtain fringe, um, curtain fringe money piece. So many of you are getting into this money piece trend, which I love. I'm a product of the 90s. We did it first and I love it there. And I love seeing it come back in a new and fresh way, especially with a curtain fringe, okay? So what I'm going to do is actually use my um, Wella Color Charms Orange and I'm using this on the white hair so you can see what I'm doing, okay? So this is again, a direct application. I just pop open the bottle. I'm going to squeeze it into my ion um, bowl right here. I love these ion bowls. I love color. I love seeing color inside of color. It just makes me happy. And there we go, okay? Now, before anything else, we're always gonna use gloves. You know, it just, baffles me when I see people using hair color um, without gloves because, you know, let's just, let's put a glove on. It's so simple and so easy. And uh, look, it took no time at all. Okay. So let's get my friend here. Hey, Fran, say hi to everybody. Hey, girl. And let me pump up the jam just a little bit. And here we go. Can you all see her? She is filling herself today. She is going to get a curtain fringe a little bit later on. I will have um, my finished application of her available on my Instagram a little bit later. I don't know how to lock this in. Hold on real quick. There we go. There we go. Okay, don't move. Okay, cool. So we could see her, okay? So with a money piece and a curtain fringe, what I like to do is take a section that is triangle so when your hairstylist cut your or maybe you did cut your curtain fringe <clears throat> they used a triangle section so it's going to be a little more wide and bold right at the hairline and it's coming to a point so when i am creating a money piece on a curtain fringe i like to follow that exact section these dotted lines here represent where she's parting her hair the squiggly line is her hairline and this is her nose so I just wanted you to see how to get that bold frame by using a triangle, okay? So to section this off, use your tail comb. And I simply want you to keep the triangle following the shape of your haircut, which usually will be about the arch of the eyebrow to the arch of the eyebrow. Take a section, whoop, right like that. And take a section, whoop, right like that and we have our triangle. You see that there? Boop, 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 okay? Now what you're going to be doing is working in very thin slices, working your way all the way to that high point of that back, okay? I'm gonna section this out of the way. Now two things, this is great for when you are pre-lightening the hair, <coughs> excuse me, or if your hair is already pre-lightened or if you have selected to use um, a bold vivid that you can place on your natural color. So when I am working with my tail comb, I want to take a very fine section. And when I say a fine section, especially if you're using lightener, I want to be able to see through it. You want to be able to read a magazine through it, okay? Then you are going to take your foil, and just lay it under and use your lightener, okay? So you can place your foil in with a comb or just lay it right on top like this, secure it. Now I know you won't be able to see at home, so peel it open or pull it to the side. Even if you pull it to the side so you can expose an area right there, you will be able to see what you're doing. Starting a little bit further down from the root and just fully saturate. But do you see how completely sheer this section of hair is? Also, this is my bold zone. You can see by painting this orange color, 
that this is as wide as that section is going to be. As I work my way up, it is going to get shorter and slimmer and skinnier towards the back, which gives a beautiful diffusion of color, okay? So it travels back. Now, if you are using bleach, I want you to take another foil and just lay it on top, right at that root there, okay? Lay it right on top and let it rest. Let it process. The second section of bleach is going to be just as skinny. And when I say skinny, I mean the size of a pasta noodle. Like we're talking spaghetti, like the, the density, the roundness of spaghetti, okay? You want to be able to see through it, read through it. Here I go again. Always start your application below the foil and work your way up. So once I'm there, I can continue to paint all the way down. This is a great technique so you don't have to fold and be a foil expert. This allows you to fully saturate your color all the way through if you are doing your money piece or if you are pre-lightening, okay? I'm gonna do one more section. Let's take our foil and just lay it right on top there. Again, if you're doing this at home, do it on a diagonal away so that you expose an eye so you can see this. And I'm glad I'm doing one last piece because this is so high, I cannot see. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that side down and I'm going to paint one last time using my Wella Color Charms paint. This is the orange color. I'm going to finish the rest of her color with a beautiful honeydew color. I think orange and almost like a pistachio almond. I love that color combination together. And um, then I'm gonna cut her a new curtain fringe and she's gonna be fresh to death and ready for May hair color vivid season. Let's go. So just like that, painting all the way down, making sure to get a full saturation. You see me going back and forth and all the way down. And I'm going to lay my final foil up top, just like so, okay? Boom and boom. Now that is how you can get a money piece at home wearing a curtain fringe. It is based on that triangle section that you see here. This is how your fringe was cut, your curtain fringe was cut. So we want to follow that widest piece at the bottom working your way up will give a soft diffusion. One thing last that I love to do is on the side, I love to take one section directly on the side at a diagonal and apply hair color there as well. This will help frame the face beautifully just on this piece here so that it will blend and match perfectly and continue down your face shape. So after you finish the top, I want you to go in and do one, two, or three little baby slices up through the side so that you get that beautiful display of color running against the shape and side of your face as well, okay? This will give some continuity to the color and also give um, some beautiful symmetry to the eye. So make sure that you don't forget to do some side pieces right like so. Okay, so here we go, here we go, there we go, and she is going to continue to process. So because it's semi-permanent hair color, we have no developer, it's going to be deposit only. We're going to get so much shine and at about 25 to 35 minutes, we're just going to rinse it out with the coolest water possible and um, you're gonna be good to go. So I'm gonna let her cook, I'll finish her up. And we have finished with all of the questions. Um, let me check the chat here, I see my friend. We have 10 minutes left. Um, I want to open this up to you. If you have any questions right now, I would love to take them about any of the techniques or the questions that I answered for you today. And I also want to invite you into my DMs.
come on to the world of Gregory Patterson hair over on my Instagram. I really want to know your challenges because Dishon on DIY is going to happen quite often because so many of you are sending me such great questions that I think are really valuable for a lot of people. Hold on. Okay, we see Becca coming in. So I want you to invite you into my DMs. Ask me your questions. Tell me what you did, what you used, where you were headed, and together as a university, we will be able to figure out how uh, to get that pro version at home from your guy right here, okay? So Becca asks, this may have been asked already, but how do you get red out of blonde hair? Good question, Becca. Red is the largest molecule and it is such a challenge to get out of hair. Two ways that you could do this that I would recommend. Number one is lightening, so bleach. Color will not remove color. Bleach is the only way, lightener is the only way to get that out. Sometimes people go for a color remover or a color stripper. I'm on the fence with those things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they bring out too much warmth. Um, and it, yeah, I just feel like I don't have control. With lightener, I can watch it. I can control it with my developer. I can control it with the application. And once I see I'm where I want to be, that's when I can remove it. Once I see that color removed. The other way to get red out of blonde is to add a different tone. A tone opposite your color wheel, which opposite of red is green, is going to neutralize it, okay? So it's gonna cool that red down. Or think of other tones that you might want to add that are semi-permanent that could be a fun transition until that red finally fades away underneath that other color that you put on. But the easiest, quickest way is through lightener and slow and steady will get you there. Beautiful question, Becca. I love that. Thank you for asking. Um, do we have any other questions? We have Dina. Dina, hello. Thank you for the question. What about using different coloring products together? I mean, Arctic Fox and Ion for coloring as an example. Here's what I would do because every color also really, really good question. I love that. Every um, uh, collection has their own formulations, right? I would stick in a house, in a family. So stay in your mixing of Arctic Fox only. And if you have some ion colors that you love, mix only ion colors together. You can definitely use multiple color families throughout one head. But if I were you, I would recommend sticking in a color family, Arctic Fox, only mix with Arctic Fox. Ion, only mix with Ion. Good Dye Young, only mix with Good Dye Young because their formulations are perfected for that product in that tube, okay? So stay in the color family, good question. Um, Dina, awesome, I hope that you have fun. So I think this is time, um, time for our wrap up. Thank you for those questions. Once again, I want to invite you into my DMs over at Gregory Patterson Hair. Um, I'm going to finish this. It's gonna take me a little minute because I'm going to add her honeydew color. And I want you to play in color this May. May at Sally Beauty is our color month and we have so many new products. Over 60 new shades have launched on the store um, website and in stores. And I want you to come and play with hair color. I actually think for the first time in my life, I am going to go for it and go bold. I'm having the itch and I just want to go for it. I may enlist the help of Sally Crew friend and member, Miss Emily Bullen Hare. Pray that she can do it um, because I, I just, I wanna change, I wanna go bold. So let's do something, let's go bold. If you have any questions, any DIY um, cues, you can add them to my DMs and always you can buy online and pick up in store. You can shop 24 seven on sallybeauty.com. And my favorite way to shop is on the app because I can lay in bed and watch RuPaul's Drag Race and tick, tick, tick. And in a few days, it's at my doorstep. So I hope you enjoyed this DIY University by Sally Beauty. Again, my name is Gregory Patterson. I love sharing this information with you. I hope you learned a little something. If you did, please leave it in the comments below. Go over to our YouTube channel where we have so much information over there playlist upon playlist of all things DIY. 
and go over to our Facebook if you're not there now and like our Facebook because this is where DIY University is happening. Thank you so much for sharing your Wednesday afternoon with me. I hope you learned a little something, something. I love you all. Play in color. Happy day. And come on, hump day is Wednesday. Yee! We'll see you next time. Ciao, Ella.